What's going on? Adam Swartz here. And on this week's Real Estate News, we're going to talk about this brand new announcement that just came out talking about FHA loans on student loan debt. Obviously, this has been a big talk since uh, Joe Biden was running saying that they're going to pay off student loan debt or, you know, give them 50,000, 15,000. But currently, who knows when that's going to get paid off. But we do have some news about housing. Currently, right now, an FHA loan is someone who can buy a house with a minimum payment of 3.5%. And obviously, when it comes to getting a loan for a property, you do what's called debt to income ratio. So how much you make a month based on how much debt you have, they figure out how much you can buy a home for, right? So currently, a lot of people get hit with student loan debt. Obviously, that's a monthly payment you're continuing to make. So currently right now with an FHA loan, with someone who has student loan debt, you have to be hit with a 1% uh, per month. So if you have a 30,000 uh, loan out on your student loan debt, that's the average in the nation right now, back in 2020, you get hit with a $300 payment per month. Even if you were doing something where you're maybe making no payments or you're making less than that $300 payment based on other factors called income driving payments. Basically what you're doing is you're spreading out your payments to make smaller and smaller and smaller because you can't make the payment and it goes out for 20 to 25 years. So even if you're not making that $300 payment a month, that's 1%, you're getting hit with a $300 payment. Now it's gonna be 0.5. So instead of getting hit with a $300, or $300 payment a month, you're gonna get hit with 150. Obviously that lowers your debt per month and it gives you more buying power. The problem with this is, is that in this article that came out, uh, I'll have it linked below, they're talking about someone with a $200,000 payment for student loan debt. Who has a $200,000? Lawyers, doctors, things like that. Yeah, so they're getting hit with a $2,000 a month payment. Now it's gonna be down a thousand. So this is all great and dandy, but there's not a big shift from $300 to 150. The average student loan debt is $30,000, but it's definitely gonna help out people who have $200,000 in debt. So this really, this is helping out people with high income jobs already, high income uh, debt based on the loans they took out to do doctors or lawyers or things like that. So what I think is very interesting is that we're already seeing this problem in the market where um, we have tons of buyers and no supply. So what is this going to do now? This is going to cause a bigger problem with more buyers in the market. And then what is it going to do? It's going to keep driving prices up because there's more demand. Just like we talked about a few months ago with the $15,000 tax deduction for first time home buyers that Joe Biden was talking about doing. All that's going to do is drive more buyers into this market, which we already have enough of, and it's just going to increase prices to make it even harder for FHA buyers right now. I'm going to tell you guys right now, being frank, FHA buyers in the Riverside uh, market, it if you don't have money to pay above cash gap, you're not going to get your offers accepted. We have all cash offers, people putting 20% down, putting 50% down, things like that. Like you're being an FHA buyer, you just cannot compete. So this is all great and dandy to help people out, but I think it's really not going to help out that much in our market. It might help out in other markets, maybe smaller markets, but in the Riverside market, we are just seeing too many buyers out there already. And if you're an FHA buyer right now, um, it's just really tough out there because you're competing with people putting 20% or even more down. So great news, but honestly, this, this new, uh, this new, FHA program that they just passed or are going to pass is only going to help people that make way more income. Because like I said, what's the difference between $300 a month and 150? Not that much when you're buying power, but there's a big difference between $2,000 a month and $1,000 a month. So hopefully this video helps. I appreciate Taylor Loop from Modern Lending giving us this information to keep us more updated on what's going on. And then until next time, guys, peace.